So I'm gonna go ahead and get us started here. There's several ways that you can pull up your Dimension Style Manager. I'm gonna show you a few of those ways. Let's see, we can go to, if you're on your home ribbon, go to the annotation panel, pull it down. The second icon says Dimension Style, and there we go, pops up the Dimension Style Manager. I'm gonna close this out and show you a couple of other ways that you can do it. You can go to Format, the Format pull-down menu, click on Dimension Style, pulls it up. You can go to the Annotate tab, pulls up the Annotate ribbon. Within the Annotate ribbon, you have a Dimensions panel. If you look at that panel, there's a tiny little arrow in the lower right corner. If you click on that tiny arrow, you can pull up the Dimension Style Manager. If you're using a toolbar, the last icon on the Dimension toolbar takes you to the Dimension Style Manager. There's so many ways to get to any one thing in AutoCAD. There's no right way or wrong way. You do what you feel comfortable with. Just wanted to show you a few options there. Now that we're in here, we can see AutoCAD gave us two different Dimension Styles by default. I've got one called Annotative and I've got one called Standard. We're going to create a new one for the small radius and I'm going to say New. Just click on the New button. Notice how it wants us to give it a new name, but you have to start with an existing dimension style. So we're gonna start with standard and we're gonna give it the name ASME Y14.5 small radii. We'll say continue. We'll click over here to start on the lines tab. It is important to remember how dimensions are constructed. There are two different lines on a dimension. You've got dimension lines and you've got extension lines. So notice how this is split up into two sections. We've got dimension lines up top. It's got a gray box around it and extension lines on the bottom. Dimension lines are the lines that have dimension text on it. It also is the line that has arrows on it. Extension lines are the lines that extend out from the part. So it's important to know the difference between those two lines, not only when we're dimensioning and going through our dimensioning rules and do's and don'ts, but also when we're in here in the styles so that we know what we're setting up. Anytime you see this option where it says color, line type, line weight, you wanna go ahead and leave those at the default. Always leave them by block. We don't wanna force it to be a different color. As if it's supposed to be green because dimensions are supposed to be green, then uh, don't force it to look like it's green when it's on another layer. So always leave this by block. We've got a few options in here. We've got extend beyond ticks. Well, we don't use ticks when we are in mechanical projects. In architectural projects, they have what's called an architectural tick. And um, that's the setting that we use for that. For mechanical projects, we always use arrowheads. So right now I have it set to close filled arrowheads. We'll see that in a second. But we're going to go ahead and uh, just skip over this one. It's grayed out just because we're not using ticks, so we cannot extend beyond the ticks. Baseline spacing. So the guidelines for ASME tell us that our dimension spacing, the initial dimension has to be a minimum of 0.4. It can be more than 0.4. It cannot be less than 0.4. Every additional dimension has to be a minimum of 0.25 from each other. It can be more than 0.25, but it cannot be less than 0.25. So when we look at the baseline spacing here, this is the spacing. If we were to use the baseline command, this would be the spacing between two different dimensions. So it's set to 0.38, which is within that guideline. It's 0.25 or more, so it's allowed to be 0.38. We're going to leave it at that default. If you find that you're using another dimension spacing, then you'll want to come, here, come in here and set it up for whatever dimension spacing you're using, as long as it's more than 0.25. We've got these two options here, which are to suppress. We can either suppress the dimension line one or dimension line two. I'm going to show you what it looks like, but we're not actually going to do this for this project. But just so you can see, watch this black image. I'll suppress dimension line one. The arrow disappeared. Dimension line two, the other arrow disappeared. Mechanical projects do not dimension or suppress dimension lines. You'll see that mostly I have seen it with civil projects, but never mechanical projects. So we're done with dimension lines. Now we're going to talk about extension lines. So with extension lines, again, anytime you see these options that say by block for color, line type, line weight, we're going to leave those at the default. We can suppress extension lines just like we could suppress dimension lines. I'm going to click on them just so you see what happens. Extension line, extension line. We're not going to do that. Again, Civil does that quite often. 
Now we have this option over here, extend beyond dimension lines. So that is saying, if you look at this top dimension in this picture, we have an arrowhead and notice how that extension line extends out past the arrowhead. So that's the setting that we're setting up right here. For this, we're gonna go ahead and set it to 0.125. Offset from origin, that is the little tiny gap that you see right there between the part and the dimension itself, the extension line. So that's the little gap that we're defining here. We'll go ahead and leave that at the default. We don't want to check this box. It says fixed extension lines. We don't want our extension lines to be a set length. We want the extension lines to extend all the way to the endpoint of the object. So that's all that we had to change in here. Really, everything was pretty much by default. The only thing that we changed in this tab, in the lines tab, is extend beyond dimension lines. We set that to 0.125. Now we're going to click on symbols and arrows. Here we have a whole bunch of information. Uh, we've got the arrowheads. First, we'll just, we'll just uh, focus on uh, settings for the arrowheads. Notice if you pull this down, we have a lot of arrowheads to choose from. There's that architectural tick that we talked about. Again, you'll learn more about this in chapter six when we talk about architectural dimensioning, but that architectural tick, if I were to choose it, that's what it looks like. Notice how it extends past the extension line. So if I were to come over here, it was grayed out before because I didn't have tick set, but I could, I could enter something now if I needed to. I'm gonna go change this back to close filled. Arrowhead size, we're gonna make that a 0.125. Anytime you have an arrowhead size, you wanna make your text height match. So your arrows and your text will always be the same size. That's a good rule of thumb. So we've got that setting. The next thing we're gonna look at is center marks. Notice how we've just got a little plus sign for a center mark right now. I'm gonna click on the word line, and now our center marks look the way that we want them to. Break size, as you have two different dimensions cross over each other, remember you can't cross through a dimension line, but two extension lines can cross each other. So when two extension lines are crossing each other, there, there's an icon, there's a command for dimension break. And so this is how big of a gap it's going to make when you use that break command. We'll leave that at the default. The right side here has to do with arcs and the arc length symbol. We're actually not going to use any of those, so we're going to leave them all at the default. So the only thing that we had to change on this page was we set our arrowhead size to 0.25, or I'm sorry, 0.125. And we set our center marks to line. Now we're gonna to go to the text tab. So text appearance, we've got a few different options here. The text style, by default AutoCAD gives us two text styles. We've got annotative and we've got standard. If you have a text style that you were supposed to use in here and you don't see it in that list, you can click on the little dot, 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 and it'll take you over here to the text style manager and you can create a new text style. It'll now be in that list and you can apply and set it current if you need to. We don't need to do that. We do need to make sure, let me click in there one more time. You do wanna make sure that all of your text is set to Arial. We always are gonna use Arial when we're doing mechanical projects. The only other font that we're gonna use is Stylus BT for our architectural projects, but always do double check and make sure that you remember to set it to Arial font. Text color, text fill, we're gonna leave those at the default. Text height, do you remember what our text height was supposed to be? The book tells us it's gonna be 0.125, but again, remember that rule of thumb. We want the text height and the arrowhead size to match. So whatever your arrowhead size was, we know what our text height is and vice versa. Fraction height scale, we actually, it's grayed out right now because we don't have fractions showing in these dimensions. That's more for architectural when you have feet and inches and you choose to have the architectural unit style, then we can, um, this would open up and we can determine how big our fractions are gonna be shown. So it's grayed out for now. We're not gonna use fractions when we do mechanical projects. We use decimal. We could draw a frame around the text. As cute as it looks, we're not gonna do that, uh, but just wanted to show you that option there. So don't check that box. And then the rest of these is the text placement. So. This just shows where our text is gonna be in relation to the lines within our dimensions. So we're gonna leave this all at the default, but I do wanna show you centered versus above. Notice that top in the picture up here, that top dimension went above the dimension line as opposed to centered. 
When we're doing mechanical projects, mechanical dimensions are centered. When we're doing architectural projects, we're going to do those above the dimension line. So we're going to leave this all at the default, centered, centered, left to right, offset from dimension line. We really don't have that as an issue right now, but when our dimensions are above the dimension line, this just tells us how tall, how far away from the dimension line that dimension text is. Next, we've got text alignment. We're going to stick with horizontal. Mechanical dimensions always are shown horizontal. If you clicked align with dimension line, that's how we would have our architectural dimensions. So we're not going to do that. Just wanted to show you what it looks like, though. Horizontal is what we're going to stick with. So in here, the only setting that we changed was text height 0.125. We made sure that our text style was set to Arial font. Made sure that we're leaving it at the defaults. For mechanical drawings, we're going to go for centered dimensions, and those dimensions are going to be positioned horizontally. So we're going to choose horizontal. Next, we have the Fit tab. So on the Fit tab, it's important to read what this little paragraph says here. If there isn't enough room to place both the text and the arrows inside the extension lines, the first thing I want you to move out of those extension lines is this first option lets AutoCAD decide. You can move the arrows or the text, whatever AutoCAD thinks would work. Do we want to move the arrows out first? Do we want to move the text out first? Do we want to move both the text and the arrows? If they won't fit, then if one of them won't fit, then neither one of them get to go inside. Or always keep the text between those lines. So we're just going to leave this at the default for this one. Text placement, if the, if the text has to be moved, where is that text going to be? So we're just going to let it be beside the dimension line. There are other options to go over with leaders, but we're just going to leave it all at the default. We're going to leave annotative alone. That's something that you'll learn more about in more advanced classes. And fine tuning, we will leave both of those unchecked. Next, we're going to go to primary units. Primary units. So we definitely want our units to be set to decimal when we're doing mechanical projects. We would pull this down and set it to architectural if we were doing an architectural project. Precision. This is where you're going to look at your drawing. You're going to look over at that drawing and you're going to say, hmm, what do we have more of? Let's see. In looking at most of our drawings, we have mostly 0, 0.00. So we're going to go ahead and set that so that most all of our dimensions will come in that way. And then we'll just change the one or two that have three decimal places after the fact. Decimal separator, we're definitely going to have that as a period. The only thing that we're going to change here outside of our precision is zero suppression. When we're dealing with decimal dimensions, we want to suppress the leading zero. So instead of saying 0 0.50, we're going to suppress it to just say 0 0.50. So suppress the leading zero. We don't want to suppress the trailing zero. So that's it. We look on the alternate, and we, we're not going to mess with angular dimensions. We're just going to leave those alone. We look on the alternate tabs. The only thing, the alternate units tab, the only thing that you need to make sure is that this is not checked. Tolerances, this needs to be set to none. By default, they are, so you really usually don't have to mess with those. So we're just going to deal with lines, symbols and arrows, text, fit, and primary units. In that primary units, the only thing we did was change precision to two decimal places, and we check the box to suppress the leading zero. I'm going to say OK to this. Now we've got our new dimension style. I'm going to create another one. Remember, we were going to make two, one for a small radius and one for a large radius. And I'm going to say new. I will change this word to large. And I need to get rid of copy of. So we're going to new. We're going to start with that small radii. We're going to call it large radii. I will say continue. The only change that we're going to make, everything about these are exactly the same, except we're going to go to the Fit tab. And under the Fit tab, we are going to choose Text. And then we're going to check both of these boxes. I'll say OK. Now we have a large and we have a small. I'm going to tab over here real quick and just show you. This is in the book. And this is actually showing you the difference between what's going to happen with that large and the small radii. So it's just showing you a screenshot. Again, this fit tab is the only thing that changes between the two of them. But with the fit tab, if we have a small radii, that arrow is just pointing straight to the outside of that arc. 
if we have a large radius, we are going to have the arrows coming from the inside. So for a radius, for an arc, we're going to have the arrow come from the center, out from the inside to the edge, and then we'll have our dimension out here. For a diameter, a circle, we're going to have both arrows on the inside. So do you see the difference between those? A small radius has the arrow pointing from the outside. A large radius has the arrows pointing from the inside. The only change to it is we checked the text box and we manually checked those two boxes. And that's what's going to make that difference for us. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use the dimension command. The first dimension I'm going to do is the linear dimension. I will click here, click here, pull it out. Oh, you know what? Notice how I'm moving my text up and down. I don't want that to happen. So I accidentally left myself in the large radii dimension style. I'm going to go ahead and change myself to the small radii. That way, when I click here, click here, notice how that 2.50 came perfectly centered right where I wanted it to be. The next thing I'm going to do is we've got baseline. So you remember how we had that baseline option in there? It was the first one of the first things that we looked at under the lines tab, and this was saying 0.38 would be the baseline spacing. So that remembers the first place that I clicked, it goes back to that same base point or the same datum, and now I can just click anywhere else. Let's say maybe I wanted to click here, maybe I wanted to click here, and it just keeps making them 0.38 spacing in between. I'm gonna go ahead and dimension down here as well, linear. Maybe I want to dimension from here to here. Baseline. Let me go ahead and turn on my quadrant of snap. Snap here, snap there. I pressed enter when I was done with that command. And I just grabbed that grip and moved it out to the quadrant there. So that is the baseline command. It just makes sure your dimensions are staying evenly spaced. As long as they're coming back to the same datum, you can use baseline. Now I'm going to come over here and use two different commands. I've got an arc. So that arc is going to need a radius. I'm going to click on radius. When you start that radius command, you're going to click the edge of the arc. And notice I can kind of move it out to wherever it is that I need it. I'm going to select diameter for the circle. Click on the edge of the circle. And here I have a diameter of one. If I need to change either one of those, right now I'm on small radii, so notice the arrow is pointing to the outside of it. I can click on this guy, change it to large radii, and now that arrow just jumped to the inside. I can click on this one, change it to large. Now those arrows are appearing on the inside. So it's always a good idea to go ahead and create two different dimension styles, one for a large radius, one for a small radius, so that we can easily manipulate how those arrows are going to appear, depending on whether you have a large radius or a small radius. One more thing I want to show you before we're done is let's just go ahead and zoom into this one. Notice. How everything has two decimal places. That's what we set up in the settings when we were in our primary units tab. Generally speaking, I looked at the sketch and saw that we mostly had two decimal places. If you have anything that has a third decimal place, you can click on that one dimension, right click. The fourth option down is your precision. So I can set that precision to have three decimal places. Doesn't affect anything else. Make sure that you remember to do that because we usually on these on these drawings in chapter four and uh, that we did in chapter four, we're dimensioning in chapter five. We usually do have one or two that has three decimal places. So that's what you can do just individually. You can click on one dimension, right click, precision, change it to three decimal places or whatever is needed. All right. That's it. That is how we have set up our dimension styles, one for a small radius, one for a large radius.